You might think the title Knives Out is actually literal for a murder mystery, but no. In fact, writer-director Ryan Johnson borrowed it from a Radiohead song. Come to think of it, Johnson must have been listening to the album Amnesiac a lot over the last few years. Yeah, yeah, see, this is probably what he kept saying to himself when he was writing The Last Jedi. See, and this is what he would have said after The Last Jedi came out. Oh wait, no, 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 that one's for me. Yeah, that's what it's gonna cost me if I keep playing Radiohead songs on a YouTube video. Welcome to Real School, the film course you really wanted to take because who the hell wants to learn about math? I'm your host, Michael Wynn Johnson, and today I will be reviewing nerd infuriator Ryan Johnson's Knives Out. I call Johnson that in jest because, to be honest, The Last Jedi is not as bad as people make it out to be. It's not the best Star Wars movie, but I actually appreciate and respect the fact that he was willing to take chances with Star Wars because when you anger fans of The Wars, to be honest, your own career could play the victim in a murder mystery. Murder mysteries have always been near and dear to my heart because growing up, my sisters and I had a recording from a local Toronto broadcast of the classic Clue. And we watched that gem over and over and over until we wore out the tape. Which not only tells you how old I am, but how long it's been since we've had a good whodunit. And I learned a lot from that little tape. In fact, I learned the secret recipe to a successful murder mystery. Take two parts unparalleled cast, add one part atmosphere, one part engaging plot twist, and a dash of comedy. And like most good bakers, you can play with the ingredients, but only a little bit. As mentioned in the recipe, the majority of it has to be the cast. It's the most delicious part. It's the gluten. It's the flour. Okay, flour is not delicious. That's a bad analogy. But in Knives Out, the cast is exactly what you want. Delicious flour. Clue was a once-in-a-lifetime comedic cast. You had icons in comedy and other genres. You had SNLers, you had improv gurus, and you know what? Knives Out is the 21st century version of that. You've got huge stars like Chris Evans, you got legends like Plummer, icons like Lee Curtis, and you get great character bits from people like Shannon and Colette. And everyone's good. There is not a weak link in this entire cast. What I also love is how much that Knives Out leans into the murder mystery melodrama. Now, that starts with Johnson's writing and directing, but really it's carried by the cast. Daniel Craig is the perfect example of how a lot of characters in Knives Out are actually caricatures. His Benoit Blanc and his Kentucky Fried accent I actually defended to colleagues as bad on purpose because quite frankly you can tell he's having a lot of fun with it and nobody really corrected his accent, so what the heck, it's larger than life. But this genre thrives on character archetypes, so of course, being larger than life works. I should preface that nobody goes too over the top, it's just enough, and that actually includes a not so subtle but just enough commentary on the elite 1%. The Thromby family, who is at the center of this mystery, who everybody pretty much is a part of, is everything you'd expect from a rich white family, and it's friggin' hilarious. They're vapid, they're entitled, they think they're being PC, but really they're not, and some of them are just outright alt-right, but you never full knives out hate any of them for the wrong reasons anyways, because it's very carefully balanced, and that's important because these characters all need some charm on some level. In fact, anybody who would mock Johnson's lack of cinematic subtlety with Luke chugging unpasteurized green milk and a flying space Leia needs to watch this film. Because everything is clearly thought out in detail. Yes, there are a lot of elements that are over the top, and that gives the film a lot of life, but don't mistake Johnson's broad strokes for a lack of deftness. That balance of the highs of melodrama but the lows of more subtle touches are actually seen in almost every facet of the film as well. In fact, Johnson and his director of photography, Steve Yedlin, have a lot of fun with the cinematography because they kind of play out different shots as different pieces of the murder mystery puzzle. Some are huge sweeping shots with a lot of energy and others are just small, subtle, and still. Make no mistake, however, Johnson and Yedlin are getting you to look exactly where they want you to look, like any good magician or mystery writer. But this does not play out like your typical whodunit. To call it a whodunit is actually a disservice. It's more of a how did done, how how done it, how done it sounds better. Because really early on in the movie, you think they've shown you how done it, but they have it. Now that's being pretty vague and almost spoilerish, but it doesn't actually give anything away because you might think there's no mystery, or you might think you've got this figured out, but there is, and you don't. 
I had an absolute blast watching Knives Out. It was everything I had hoped. It was fun. It was funny. It was layered. It was interesting. It was a love letter to classic whodunits, but took everything in a new direction by circumventing the staples of the genre. I can't wait to see it again. It was my favorite film at TIFF, and it is an Earn It. Poll question, if you had to cast a murder mystery, who would you put in that cast? As always, leave your answers in the comments section below. Be sure to subscribe to Real School and follow my TIFF playlist for some amazing reviews coming up, including A Beautiful Day in the Neighborhood, Ford v. Ferrari, and many more. But until then, and until next time, school's out. Hey Real Students, thanks for watching. If you want to subscribe to Real School, click that round Real School logo right beside me. Also click that damn notification bell so you're aware of all of Real School's new content. You can follow me on Twitter and of course, if you get anything out of Real School, you can always give a little back. Just click the link in the description below or the button down there and you can become part of my Patreon team.